In this video, I'm going to talk about a lesser known, at least to I suppose majority of people, a type of airsoft gun. Uh, Vario OBS is HPA based, uh, but it's not a Polar Star nor a Wolverine. Uh, this is a Daytona HPA GBBR. It's based off on the Japanese system the Escort, which was made in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, it uses AEG magazines. However, it does have recoil. From this side, it looks kind of like the early WE close bolt system. You have the brass cylinder. However, it works in a very different way so start off sounds great <coughs> sounds great right you have a recoil and you take ag magazines however what makes this different from a normal gbbr is in a normal gbbr you fire the bb first then the recoil happens or um, maybe uh, it's the same time because you have most of them are based on the TM system, or even the the ones that are based based on the WA system. You have a valve that basically is acts by pressure difference. So when you have pressure on your barrel side, it remains open, and once that pressure is lower, the valve flows to the front, close it off, and the pressure in the inside the bolt carrier, the fake bolt carrier increases to the point it just recoils backwards. The advantage of that obviously is you can have more accurate shots and more consistent shots. Uh, in this system, system however, uh, to start off, people praise this system for having very strong recoil. Uh, and that's the reason why it's not that good for, let's say, shooting a BB. In this system, your trigger is mechanical pneumatic. You are not releasing a striker to open a valve of any kind. You are press opening a valve located here. And when you press it open, the air goes up and it goes into the bolt carrier. So the bolt carriers is actually blocked. The nozzle is blocked when it's the bolt carrier is forward. And once it starts to recoil back, and you can see, I'm not too sure. Let's hope. Okay, you can see the metal bar moves. Now let me open this up and show you better how it works. Now this screw here is not absolutely necessary, I added myself. I got this rifle second hand for 450, which is not cheap at all. You can get a lot of stuff for that money. And the, the original owner used the, the VFC to convert a VFC HK416. Now do note that this system for sale right now for approximately 600 USD or probably the same amount in euros and it doesn't include the gun it's just the internals itself you have to do all the modifications yourself it's by no means an easy system to take apart okay so this is your trigger mechanism actually very interesting so we are based on safe we are not pulling anything on semi you pull this bar here okay this one second one pulls downwards so when your bolt carry recoil is backwards you press here and releases the valve that's your semi action and when you're auto, you have this flat bar here 
I just constantly pulls on the valve. Now the valve goes the intakes here, just like your compressor blowgun takes here. You have a button in there that you press on, and air is released into the middle of this with two O-rings. The two O-rings on both sides, and that O-ring seals on this metal rod with a hole in the middle, and it closed off here. So what happens is the air goes into here, the air has no place to go, okay, this is at this position normally with the spring. This is a very interesting buffer situation, so this is actually fixed, these, these two brass rings, but the buffer does move. Okay, the buffer is in the middle of the space, so buffer is actually still used. So right now this is pushed forwards, bolt all the way forwards. The air will go in and the bolt carrier immediately start going back. And actually it's all the way back when your BB is almost can feed again, the air is released. Uh, you can find an uh, animated image how the just Google squirt HPA system and you'll find how it works. So it goes back over here. I sometimes think if it's actually the... So what fires the BB is not the air that you really shoot directly from the trigger. It's what's reserved inside the bolt carrier after it moves. So basically this valve only unlocks on this position. And here it locks. So it goes forward like this, stays here. When you start recoil and pulls this part back, the air goes out. Now that's an issue because first, I have seen people getting these guns to shoot very consistent, so I'm believing that it's just my uh, gun that is old. I'm sh I think it's, uh, it looks, the system is not the oldest generation, but I still believe it's uh, two, three years old, maybe four even. So, your bucking is also very weird. Since your nozzle will be moving when you're shooting the BB, you need the air seal for an extended duration of time. It's not just on the tip of it. The bucking has, it's like a VS, VSR bucking, but for AG barrels, but a lot longer on the sealing part. So you will chamber the BB and pull it. All that duration, you need air seal. I'm not actually not sure how good the air seal is. On this one, it certainly isn't. Uh, and another issue is this part, this gun is very weak. You can't get this gun to shoot. I would say it can't shoot more than 1.5. I would say generally this shoots around one joule. I mean, then again, it is a Japanese system based. Uh, however, the construction quality of this system is very good. They used good materials everywhere that is necessary. You do have a blue steel bolt carrier that doesn't use, really use for reset a hard trigger or anything. You basically just, the reset is soft, it's just a piece of brass. And the trigger itself is wire cut steel. Then again, it's not even a. I can certainly believe this would last forever because it's steel and you don't really have any strength on it. You're just using it to press a valve. Every part is the properly machined brass. Now, go back to the, the people say this is super durable and all that. And the reason for that is, unlike a, a conventional HPA system, you have very complex pneumatic seals and all that. This one doesn't. This valve here, the pressure helps it seal. I mean, it's the uh, same as a compressor blowgun. You buy them for, I don't know, you can buy them less than 10 bucks and uh, they will last you decades because the pressure helps to push to seal it. It's unlike any uh, advanced valve you need balancing pressures, you have O-rings and all that, you don't. 
and then you have two o-rings here that will be constantly rubbing against these two ports however that doesn't matter they can be worn out the system would still work because you're releasing a lot of air and unlike any other gas system where your exit is not blocked naturally this one is physically blocked a tiny leak is cannot be compared to the airflow these valve delivers so no matter what it will work work and you cannot detect any leak because the only leak is here your, your boat carry is not pressured uh, during when you're not firing you're only pressured when you fire it in that instant However, like in this one, if you pull the trigger extremely slowly, you just let air leak out a little bit, you will hear hissing when the air just managed to pass through. So I'm certain this system is just have, uh, it's very, how I'm gonna say, it's not the build quality that make it last. I mean, it has a good build quality, but the system is designed to work in really rough conditions performance being a second point uh, this one i got in particular is not accurate at all i do blame the fact you need oil everywhere for this to work because to lube the o-rings and all that your hope of system is is a tdc you have a screw pressing a bucking uh, it's air hopped in this one however the hope is very inconsistent. I think that's not because the... I do believe the pressure system can deliver the exact amount of gas, uh, of air, to make it consistent, but the BB placement, since you, when you're shooting this, your boat carrier already moves, so you don't really have a firm nozzle behind it to keep the BB in place. Second, it's really violent, the chambering of the BB. I would compare it more violent than a Sistema, and Sistema can chop BBs really easy, and this one chops a lot of BBs. Um, I also have terrible air seal on the nozzle, and I don't really know how to solve it. I just see it as a design issue. I mean, it's... I sometimes I even believe it's the spring bubble of the buffer that compresses the remaining gas again inside the boat carrier to shoot the BB because if you look at the diagram how this thing works, it's really at the end of the recoil cycle that uh, the air start having escape roads towards the nozzle. That's also one of the reasons it's more built toward reliability than performance. In no matter what situation, it will recoil and reset the system. Firing the BB or not is secondary. Your pressure will go into the boat carrier and it will go back. It's basically channeling air into a pneumatic cylinder, except by the end of a cylinder rod, there's a tiny hole for the air to go out. If you imagine that way, it's quite easy. So this is a piston of a cylinder going inwards. I fire the piston out, the base of the piston have a hole and suddenly the air can leak out through the rod. So the leaking is the, both the residual pressure inside the cylinder, the air you release beforehand, plus the collapsing uh, the compression of the buffer to buffer wheel go forward and recompressing the piston back into the cylinder and squeeze a little bit more of air. It is very fun, uh, fun to shoot. I gave you that. It is on the stronger side of recoil, uh, recoil compared to, let's say, a Viper Tech, a GHK, a VFC, see that way? It's definitely beats it's be it's beats uh, a regular WE on green gas. If you use stronger gas on a Viper Tech or a GHK, I suppose you can get the same. But remember, this buffer is a lot stronger than we have uh, than a GHK. A GHK has a really soft buffer spring, 
So I would really compare this to a wiper tech kind of uh, a wiper tech on proper gas pressure. This is a really good recoil. However, a wiper deck shoots better. It can take, I mean, this use a dedicated bucking that costs you quite a fortune to get, and it's not always in stock because it's such a, uh, it's such a dedicated system. It's not for everyone, for sure. I can see most people using a, a regular HPA system, but this one here, you really have to want a particular thing. You really want to, this is like plain CQB without asking for high rate of fire, but uh, a high degree of realism. I mean, it's built on a GBV body. It's like real sized and recoil from someone I know that serving in the army. They said the recoil is actually quite similar to a, when you are firing a subsonic, which in my opinion for airsoft gun, that's really, really good. I heard, I knew this stream quite a while, and uh, despite I found the the diagrams and the internals, I knew that I won't be using this gun really in any situations. It's it's a eye toner on the field, but it's just not really field playable. It, you can barely get three hundred FPS with a decent weight BB. It doesn't really do creep like a gas gun, so you can't really boost power up by switching to a heavy BB. You can't. Uh, the rate of fire is on pair of a regular GBB. Trigger is squishy, so I would compare it to a regular stock AG trigger, actually, or an optical one, but this is way stronger. It will last you a lifetime. But you won't really use it for your entire airsoft life. Doesn't make sense. It is really expensive. I can't say it is really expensive for what it is, because you do have a shit ton of parts that is properly machined, spectacularly machined, really. Uh, however, you don't get any performance advantage except the recoil. Because I won't call this realistic, because it is a close bolt system. Uh, the takedown is not is the same as the AG because it doesn't allow to just pivot it open and pull the, pull out like uh, a wiper tech have a very realistic bolt carrier, for example, with aluminum nozzle and all that. And the price wise, it's about the same. You can get uh, a Inokatsu for that money or wiper tech, and that would be more playable. However, I do not regret buying this because I really wanted to own one uh, just for a collector piece for, you know, a conversation starter. It's definitely one of the exotic ones in my collection. That's my reason I decided to buy it. But no, this is not like some people on Reddit says that they turn it for gods. It's not. I would play against the Daytona owner with a regular AG any day, any day of the week. You can beat it, for sure. At least on GBB, you can aim at something, shoot, and expect the BB to hit it. There, if your gun is accurate, you can actually trust it, even though you, your optic cannot see the BB. On this one, you can't, because your gun recoil starts before your BB have left the barrel. It's a spray and a pray, yet your rate of fire doesn't really allow that kind of thing. You don't really have the energy and you don't have the range, the accuracy. Uh, it might be accurate, I don't know. I mean, in this one, it certainly isn't. Uh, I saw somebody chrono this. They certainly can be consistent, but I do not see them being accurate. And uh, I didn't see any long range tests of these being accurate they can be playable accurate like 30 40 meters and hits person with more than one round yes that you can do that i'm pretty sure but not one shot one kill at that distance and certainly not dmr material definitely not it's too weak and too inconsistent for that
So I hope this video is in shows you something else that uh, you haven't seen before. Thanks for watching.